I say something? Sure, you go ahead. Um, okay, so... Um... Actually, you should... Um... Wait, uh, Okay, um, I guess my... This isn't really much of a question, this is just so something that I've been waiting to say for a long time, if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> um... I guess... Um... My nephew, when he was six years old, he absolutely was in love with UB Funkies, and he his favorite one happened to be the rare, um, rare version of Tank. He came up with silly little songs involving Tank, and just he absolutely adored him. And ironically enough, he didn't even have the Dream State update uploaded onto his computer. But the whole point is, he made my nephew happy, which makes me happy, and. I really appreciate you just still keeping around, just doing your funky stuff, and I just hope that someday Funkies gets more prevalent if people make fan games of it and such. Yeah, so yeah. thank you so much for all of that, and um, also, fart forever. <laughs> I will, thank you. Uh, looks like we already have two questions in the Jeff Session questions channel. Great. Uh, let's see. Where am I at? Jeff is in. No. Where am I at? Uh, if you look at the channel that we're currently in, it's two channels yeah. above it. Oh, just like the main one. Oh, oh. Look at everybody there. Wow. Okay. Uh, oh, got it. Uh huh. Come on. How long do you think Funkies will have lasted if Mattel didn't shut it down like they did? <laughs> I feel like this was asked recently. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, there's no really telling. I mean, let's pick a number. You know, the I feel like it had probably, if I'm being honest, about a good three years. You know, but it just depends. You know, if we got a hot license like DC and we launched it, then that could have really shot things up and we could have kept going. The idea was to get the licenses in to kind of take us along to you know get more install base and then also to you know just kind of grow the overall business and awareness of the brand so uh, you know to the degree it did that i think that it uh you know it could have been going on for a few years more for sure do you recall the story of how the concept funkies was thought up yeah yeah i think it's in my, the video that uh that uh we did a while back, but I'll recant this sh the short version. Um, yeah, it, I have to say, first of all, that I wasn't there for the inception of the, the concept of it. Um, I came in when it was a, a USB key yeah, that you would plug really. in. OK. Yeah, so, OK, I thought I heard that somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't very sure about what um, exactly how the thing came about, other than we saw a trend with kids playing video games, small video games on their PCs, just like disposable flash games and things like that. And we thought, and since we're a game company that, you know, how, what's our interpretation of that? And so the idea was, why don't you, why don't we sell these, these little USB sticks, which were popular at the time. Um, and we'll just sell those and each one will have a game in them. And then we started thinking, well, that's, this is kind of where I came in board and I looked at it and I was just like, that's, that's too obvious. You I mean, anybody can do that. That's just like putting a file on a disc, you know? So the idea was then to come back with um, another trend that we saw in toys in general, which was this urban vinyl trend. Um, it was much more of a, an underground kind of theme, but we wanted to interpret that into the, into this in some way to make them unique and collectible because let's face it usb keys themselves aren't really collectible i don't care how much paint you put on it but um so that's kind of where it started i guess i guess when you look at radica's track record you know they take uh they've been no throughout their history they were kind of known for taking like standard toy ideas and kind of adding a unique spin on them when you look at their some of their previous projects they were more high tech and innovative compared to standard mundane children's toy yeah i mean look at like cube world and such that's what i'm at. yeah i think that's a really good way to look at it um that is kind of what we did a lot of in a lot of ways um 
we tried to make everything affordable. Obviously, um, it's funny. I was watching the uh, the review that Mixer put up um, that somebody had done online about Funkies. I forget who it was, Billium or something like that. Yes, Billium. <laughs> so I saw that review, uh, which was hysterical. I loved it, um, and it was a great synopsis of the game itself. I have to say, you know, it was really well done. Um, but I was remembering back on some of these things, and some of the games we did do were exactly like that, like Cube World. Um, I didn't work on that one, but I worked on Scanners, which was uh, very oh, similar, where scanners. you had a unit and you would scan barcodes and you could unlock different things to play games. A question. Yet yeah, again, like a twist, like, you know, v yeah. games. Kind I of actually, I'm sorry. Scanners comes in with a new way of kind of interacting with the barcode scanner and stuff. But yeah, I do yeah, have yeah. A, but I do have a question about the actual scanners thing, if you don't yeah. mind. No. Um, was there a sort of like, so even so, theoretically, if you got the scanners from then and tried to use them on today's barcodes, would they work? Like, yeah. did it depend on what type of product it was, or was it just anything goes? It didn't matter the type of barcode. If it was a barcode, it was for your real estate. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a universal way that they do barcodes and forgive me i don't really remember the technical aspects of it but this there's a universal format for the way they do them and we just tapped into that and but it would if you don't mind me saying uh, mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate you doing the whole thing in which it's not like it's an easy win but could it have killed you to have at least a monster every two turns or such noted hang on i'll make a note of that and uh we'll do that in version two <laughs> I would like to quickly say something. Uh, Jeff, what, uh, how do you feel about the fact that the original interview from last year in January, uh, how do you feel that it's now at 2K views? Oh, wow. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> 2,000 views? Yeah. Hopefully people will sit through the whole thing. That's, it was really a lot longer than I thought it would be. I think we, I think currently the video has a really good retention time on it. So, does it? I'd assume so. Well, then I would say I'm very excited. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, very cool. Very cool. It was fun to do, actually. It, uh, it went by really fast. And it only later when I looked at it, I was like, gosh, that thing was like over an hour. <laughs> but it was, uh, but it was really fun to do. And, uh, you know, and that's all to Mixer's credit. It wasn't me, obviously. Uh, let's see what other questions do we have here. So were the Dolly and Goya toys made so you can have a model of them as somewhat of a reference, or were they planned to be functional? Uh, no, it was just a case of us kind of breaking out of the form factor a little bit, and we wanted to give uh, the give you the business side of it, the retail stores were asking for exclusives on them. And so we wanted to be able to conclude, include one of the characters, for lack of a better word, from the story. And so we gave some of these exclusives, we put those in there. Because we didn't really want to take away from the actual form factor of the of guys. Um, but it did start us thinking about breaking out of that, as you saw later on with, uh, with some of the other guys. Um, you know, such as Marshall, you know, the hat and stuff like that. So we just started thinking outside of that box. Um, so, yeah, I guess so. Um, what was your favorite UB Funky mini game? Um, I always liked Deuce's game. I like Deuce's probably my favorite character, but I always liked his game too. And maybe that's why, I guess. But <gasps> I know. Sorry. No, no, I that's a good. Topic. Have you seen? Have uh, you seen? Uh, I'm sorry. Can I? Um, you share, you share a favorite mini game with my grandfather. <laughs> Me and him growing up, we we couldn't stop playing Deuce's game. It's it was really good. It's fun. It's a good game. Yeah, I also okay. like Bones game quite a bit, but it was a little difficult sometimes. Tricky. See Where it again. <laughs> Where is it again? Come on! I, I thought it was here. I, I'm trying to find this fan-made um, Deuce thing that a Deuce design that a friend did. Um, you, uh, he's it's like an oldie but a good. Oh, I found it! I found it! I found it! Where uh -oh. should I put it? Everybody, brace uh, yourself. Put it in questions, I guess, since that's the one he's reading. Questions, got it. 
Okay. There we are. Uh, questions, questions, questions. You ever just have one of those moments where you can't find anything anymore? It's directly above our VC, two up from our VC. Jeff session questions. <laughs> nice. I'm not understand nothing. I am speak Spanish. There he is. The boy. I like it. <laughs> the retro <laughs> buttons. The retro buttons, the flame pants and jacket. It just it just reeks of deuce. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, which unreleased funky do you wish had been, most wish had been produced? Bandit. Yeah, Bandit was up there for sure. Yeah, that was a good one. Bandit was cute. <laughs> Funny story, I actually made a custom noise for Bandit in case he actually was ever brought to the game through a fan mod. He was already in the game in 1.0. He's oh. walking around. Yeah. He be vibing. Uh, <laughs> there were a few in there we were trying to fill up. That's how we started coming up with so many characters because we were trying to fill the worlds with all these guys. And then we're like, well, I guess maybe we should start. So when we went to go like do new ones, we'd kind of look at what we had in the world that we hadn't produced and just see if we could pull, put together a world, a new world for it. So. Apparently, Sprocket was part of one of the opening cutscenes, but he wasn't planned until much later. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so if you could create a brand new funky based on an animal, what animal would it be, and would its name, game, etc., be? Um, a new animal based on an animal. Let's see. Um, I think I would go after a fox, and I would call it. Funky Foxy. Why not just Foxy? Be, actually, it would be for frames. Like, you would have different picture frames, and it would be called Funky Foxy Frames. Yes. So why not just Foxy? No, no, no. It's got to be Funky Foxy. Because, let's face it. Most foxes are kind of funky. You know what you've done now, right? You, uh, everyone's going to make an original character based on that. <laughs> I'm just going to draw uh, Foxy Quiet. from Five Nights, yeah. but as a funky now. Thanks. No! <laughs> Something that's on my yeah. agenda. You. <laughs> I like it. Um, let's see. What did I miss here? What happened to the Dolly and Goya figures at Toy Fair 2009? Uh, I don't know. We never. I don't think we made it. Oh, you mean like the ones we had in the case and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, the I guess? ones that were on display. Oh, <laughs> I imagine they probably came back to the office with us and somebody stuck them in their pockets when and everything shut down. Ooh. Sorry. Out. Um, and it could be gone. out in the wild, technically. They very well could be. This is true. As How you can see, enough. the Dolly and the Goya figures are still around somewhere. <laughs> somewhere lost. In between zones. Um, how aware of you are? The, of oh, sorry. I'm really sorry. I was going to make a comment of what sure. if somebody who worked at Reddit or the company, their it was like their father or something, and then now somehow the kid has it somewhere floating around, like when you know you can think about that. It's like crazy. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that was good. Because okay. the kids who play UV Funkies, you know. Yeah. The funker becomes the funky. <laughs> okay, how aware of you are distant ambient noises that is heard within the game along with the zone themes? Is there a reason why early zones have more ambience than later zones? Funky Towns has a lot. Paradox Green. My guess is it's just the filter that we used got better. That's I um, wish it was something more complex than that or thought out, but I'm guessing it's just the filter that we used for it. Got better. Uh, a more technical question. Uh-oh. Um, how much time was spent in designing and programming the games as opposed to other aspects of development? Um, the, the whole thing from, I think, Nuts to Bolts was about a nine-month process, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, the, most of that was in the uh, programming, which didn't take a 
ton amount of time, but it did take some. Um, but uh, <laughs> as some of you might notice, the funkies changed a little bit from sometimes when they were in the game to when they came out in packaging or when they were featured on packaging and later actually came into production. So some of that is because we're working so far out with the, the uh, software that by the time we finalize the actual figures themselves, that the software, we didn't have time to go back and fix it. It was locked already. So that's kind of why there's some of that mismatch done. We're honestly from series one, two and three, we we're running as fast as we could and we we're re releasing them as fast as we could. Um, we had two releases. We do a spring and a fall release. And so the fall was initially our launch. That was right after just before or after Mattel took us over and then they got involved with Funky Key Island and that was a spring launch. It was a smaller launch. Um, so um, speaking of um, Mattel, um, mm -hmm. I know you probably already answered this, but with no bias at all in a professional light, how do you feel about FAMPS? <laughs> <laughs> My guess is that you probably already know how I feel about FAMS. <laughs> and no, that, I legitimately you know. do not remember. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, well, it was... <laughs> so the story with FAMS is that, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, very similar to um, Funkies, although it was based on emotions. Um, a little bit like the Pixar game, or movie. Um, but in my mind, since I had been with the original game and... It was derivative. It was just a watered down version of Funkies, and I didn't think it held. It was held to the standard. Um, you know, aesthetically, I thought the characters looked okay, but I thought the gameplay wasn't as good. Oh, and it was made for girls. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, that, I mean, it's girly version of Funkies. Basically. Yeah, but that's that's one of the reasons I didn't like it. Also, was because it presupposed that regular Funkies couldn't be played by girls, and that was ridiculous. Because yeah, they were they were being played by boys and girls everywhere. So it didn't really matter that we didn't need a girl specific version of it. So. And the one, well, I mean, you have to you have to at least give them credit for one thing. At the very least, they used NFC technology as opposed to magnets. Yeah, that was another thing I didn't like actually. What? Um, yeah, yeah. Why? Little, I'll tell you why. It was a little more reliable. I like the tactile click of locking in a figure. And I always thought that that was one of the th reasons that the game really caught on like it did. There was just a, a tactile feeling of when you locked in that thing and saw it appear on screen. I you never got that with the other ones. Just the satisfaction of popping through. a funky on the hub. A little bit, yeah. It's a little bit. I mean... If, like, with the technology that's available now, what way, in order to keep that tactile thing but still make it more efficient, do you think would work? <laughs> Velcro. Uh, <laughs> that's the sound. Oh, wait, I have an idea. Um, regardless of... How about, how about in terms of it, it has both the NSFG, NFC chip and the magnet. So the magnet is only for cosmetic effect. What really matters is what's in the NFC yeah, chip. That would be the obvious, like kind of the best of both worlds. Um, it's a nice midway. It would also be probably an expensive solution. So that was oh, the other side of it too, is that the, the solution that we had was fairly inexpensive. I mean, it really was. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it also was, it was kept the price down. And that was our biggest Did, thing. We wanted to keep the price of the figures down to where they were only like four bucks, five bucks. So, so essentially, so I'm guessing that how it works is that it's like the magnets have different polarities for each funky or. Yeah. Somebody here could probably explain it better than I could. But yeah, I, I think that... I think someone wrote up an entire guide on how it works in one of the dev channels. I don't remember where. Check mm -hmm. the mod like channel awesome. later. I think Wait, it's hold on. Hold on. Before anyone else goes on, as it was planned to be funky tools, um, can someone help UB Bale properly ask the question? Uh, 
I don't know what he was trying to say. I, um, uh, UB Vale is trying to ask, as it was planned to be funky tools. I, I think he's trying to say something on the lines of how far did, wait, me, I mean, forgive me, Vale, if I got this question wrong, but I'm guessing what he's trying to ask is how much was funky tools planned and what's with the campiness of the quote unquote pitch of it. What's that mean? The pitch. Uh, were you talking uh, the about pit. the video? The video, yes. The I think Funky Tools video. I think you talked about this before. It was a mock-up video, I believe. Oh, the video, like to promote the the of what Funky it is. Funky Tools, yeah. Oh, the yeah. The one with iFunk in it. And that was so. Game. I actually yeah. found someone on Instagram who has iFunk right now. But they won't really? join. Yeah, they won't join the Discord. They just have it on Instagram, and it was really cool. I don't know how they got him, but they have him. <laughs> Thought that was cool. Nice. Wait, yeah. someone actually has iFunk? I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I someone remember had, there was someone who had a recreation of it on there. No, like they actually have him. I can show you later, Mixer. Like I can send you a DM. Yeah, about please it. do. So. That'd be good. Well. Yeah, you know, it, again, everything was so rushed with that one, so it was just a race to get it to the end, and the video just kind of was basically what we thought it was going to be. It wasn't based in reality, so I guess that's the short answer. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what other questions we have here, too. I appreciate, you know, not be honest, what's the process of making the sprites for the funkies, such as software use? Sorry, I can't answer that. I would have to kill you if I did. Wait, what, what was the question? Um, are there any early designs you wish had not had been had not been changed? For example, on one of the packages, we got an early peek at Yang and Sid that were changed for the final game. No, I don't think, I think so. I um, think that was was that Sid or was that Oni on the packaging? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any designs that I wish hadn't been changed. I think they all ended up changed for the better. For the better, right. okay. Um, oh, right. This was, um, speaking of this, this was something that, uh, speaking of which, um, oh, yeah, um, I, I come back to me. I, I, I need to think. <laughs> no, you move on to someone else. I don't know yet. Uh, yeah, let's. Get back to uh, questions. Pop, you're honking again. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so next question. Rarities of three funky tribes. Were they always referred by three terms or were there other ways to express rarities other than common, rare, and very rare earlier on? Oh, rarity of funky tribes. No, no, it's just the colorways that they were done. Oh no, 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 no! I know he was asking. Uh, they were asking, like, were they ever referred to as different sorts of things, or were they always known as common, rare, and very rare? Oh, got it. Okay. Um, no, they were always referred to those three as. As far as I remember, I do remember having a conversation though about what about whether to do very rare ones and how many. Um, in terms of like doing one for everyone or just one uh, here and there within a collection, uh, you know, random figures would be very rare. Not ever having a very rare for everyone. I remember that being a topic of conversation. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I, 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 sorry. Well, I was just going to ask Mixer if he remembers the fight. Did I share that um, the DC PowerPoint with you guys? The PowerPoint? I don't believe you shared the PowerPoint. I know you showed the mock-ups of the Funkies themselves, but I don't remember mm. the PowerPoint. Are you sure not like uh, tampering with NDA agreements? No. Can't tamper with those. Sorry. But I can show you some. 
Wait, they're they're still, they're still not they're still not void. Um. Yeah, they probably are void by now, but I'm then, still not gonna get into probably IP stuff too much. Fair enough. Um, but I do want to show you a couple things that I pulled aside, but now for some reason aren't. Oh, okay. also, um, this joke has probably been made a thousand times already, but would it have killed you to have a packaging similar to what Skylanders and Disney Infinity did? In terms of the how the funkies are, like you would need scissors and the packaging was sharp. You would need scissors to open the scissors. Yeah. Yeah, I really didn't like that either. Um, oh, sorry, it wasn't really my call. But yeah. oh, cool. mm -hmm. It was more of a Mattel thing, wasn't it, for the packaging? Yeah, we had to use all the Mattel. As someone who collects a lot of Mattel things, including old Hot Wheels stuff, I can tell you that Mattel's packaging has never been very intuitive. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's you always horrible. Hot you can just peel off the, the uh, cardboard. I think. Hold on, bear with me just a second. I'm trying to share something with you guys. I have to authorize my computer here. I'd recommend posting it in your funky founder form so we can just make sure that it's archived correctly so we don't lose it. Hmm, okay. Can you guys see this? Oh, yep. You're, he just went live. Everyone needs to click on his live stream yep. to be able to just, see it. Oh! <laughs> that, that takes me back. Holy shit. God, that aesthetic. Points. So these were like uh, some of the key experiences that we wanted for the DC Wait, Funkies. So you literally made this like you sat in the meeting and still did. So this was an actual thing that you showed people in a meeting. Or yeah. Meeting. Yeah. Uh, keys to Funkies. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, this is just like one of our PowerPoints that we that I pulled together and uh, and presented I forget what it was for. Probably just to explain the concept of how it would go. It may even been to DC. Um, Change the alter ego into a comic book store. Oh, Taken to DC store. So to some of these were there were issues with them, and some of them would have an Arkham Asylum, a Hall of Justice. Goal so new incentive. Oh, okay. superpowers! Superpowers. Wait, so what are we looking at? Sorry. <laughs> Where, oh my! In the stream, this is the like um, proposal for the DC Funkies uh, collaboration. Oh. Whoa! Wait, so, so, like, you got permission from I... DC before doing this, right? Um, no, I think we just mocked it up, honestly, for them. What? You <laughs> actually be surprised how often that happens in gaming, like sure. pages. What? Beautiful. Um, there's also an interesting story, sorry to go off topic, on the subject of pit being pitched. Did you know that Kingdom Hearts literally started off as a pitch to a Disney exec in an elevator? Did it really? Yeah, That's elevator, elevator. Yeah. pitches. This, shit happen this stuff happens all the time. Elevator pitch. Are we about to swear? So. Uh, oh, oh. I'd recommend keeping sway into a minimum, but I guess. <laughs> Depends oh. on what Jeff thinks, obviously. <laughs> You sure Jeff oh. doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> what do I care? Um, <laughs> hold on. So, okay. Next. Uh, okay. So the next question that Popo asked, something, something regarding color schemes. How did they decide on that? Was, was common done first or uh, well, you can read it for yourself. I don't have to. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, common was always done first. Um, and things, but we did do, we, outside of the very first launch, um, for starting with Funky Key Island, we developed all three at the same time. So um, the first one was always the one we did, and then we would go back and do the rarities um, as derivative of, of iterations of that. What was my favorite music track composed for the game, if you remember any? Mm, no idea. I can't remember any. Sorry. Um, since we talked about packaging, why was Paradox Green packaging so simple? It made it so it's easy to steal the funkies. Oh, so apparently we have a thief in our midst here, Planto. Mm. Plant, get called out. Um, <laughs> Plant's a thief. A thief. 
Thank you for sinking our brand, Planta. Appreciate that. <laughs> what was with how disturbing Nightmare Rift was? Yeah, you know, it was funny in that Billiam uh, review, he made a big point of that. <laughs> I think that was just us kind of really kind of taking it to a different level and just being funny with it. it Plus, it, I think... ever loving Hell out of me as a kid. Sorry for interrupting. Did it really? Cry. It did. No, funny. I actually like, I, I love Nightmare Rift, but I, I would not go anywhere near that skin section. I would. I don't know. I was a creepy kid. Hey, you can't you can't speak to meat without going into the flesh zone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the moves also great was also how you got dirty and how you got cleaned within there too, you know. <laughs> Getting licked. <laughs> you taste good. Oh, well, there was also the magic that that was just like. <laughs> uh, okay, so what else we got here? Just like this PowerPoint you're showing through Discord live stream, another one was found recently explained season three. Hmm, if I can recall. I wonder where that came from. Um... Would there be any more PowerPoints hanging out on your Google account considering some of these presentations were found there? Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, Speaking of that, uh, there was one thing that we found a while ago. I don't, it wasn't you who was presenting it, but there was a Mattel uh, conference about UB Funkies or something. It was a PowerPoint presentation. I don't remember if I sent it to you. If I didn't, I got to send it to you later. But it had a ton yeah. of information about Funkies on it and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. send it over. I'll take a look. If I recall, it was Eric Barbwire who uh, had that. Who? Eric? No, this oh. was uploaded on yeah. a on like a channel that just had a ton of Mattel related stuff. Uh, I'll have to look into it. We can get back to questions if anyone has any. I don't see any right now. Some people are typing those furiously typing questions. Um. <laughs> So I have a, a question. If there was uh, a one thing in the interview that you could have done differently, what would it have been? Uh, made it shorter. Made it shorter? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Why? Did I do some strange things in the interview? No, I was just wondering if you thought it was good or not. Like if there was no, any it. specific thing that you would have wanted to change. I just would have done like more of them shorter because i think sitting down for an hour i would have broken that up i think into more digestible i got something hmm. um i probably asked this before through text but no not not today of course but um i do have to wonder um did you have an end game in terms of the master locks arc when you were deciding upon you be funkies or was it always up in the air about what you wanted to do it was always up in the air no like, like no cohesive character development nothing he was always just going to a different place yeah you always have to you have to remember though that we didn't even develop master locks until far into the development of the game um we had already tested it with people and that came out of testing that whole good versus evil having a purpose for going through the game having a purpose for actually you know playing it that all came out of testing it was never our original intention to do that it was just going to be games out there and then it's only through the testing that that came out that we saw this like bigger picture kind of opened up to us and like, oh, wait, we need to make this more like like you are the funky and somebody's chasing you and you need to be able to, while you're playing these games, have this otherworldly experience in these realms. So, mm. um, so but once that was all developed, I mean, and we, you know, of course we unveiled Master Locks for Dr. Tinker, but um but that was really the only arc, I guess, that we had for the whole thing. I mean, what's just the, the was hmm. the whole thing regarding like Doctor Tinker and Doc being two completely different people. Like, from was it considered from the very beginning, or was it like brought into Paradox Green as like subtle 
oh, this was like the thing all the time, but we only thought about it for this specific world? Uh, no, it was it was thought of for Paradox Green, I guess is the answer to your question. Kind of like it wasn't thought of back in series one as being this far out idea that we were going to unveil th in version three. It was something that we came about while we were concepting uh, Paradox Green. So, so technically, so technically, Doc and Doctor Tinker have always existed. His existence was just never cohesively revealed until see, um, um, update five. Yeah. Mm. Yes, that's fair. Yeah, I would love to say that we, you know, when we launched version one, that we had all these you know had concepted this out like three or four versions we didn't even know if it'd sell if people would buy it so there wasn't too much effort put into successive versions and that's part of the reason when funky key island came out that we had to scramble so fast because it was taking off so quickly that we needed to get something else out fast so yeah Uh, let's see. What do we have? Would, Would you, you hang, hang out at the flush though in a nightmare rift? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Would you is the better question, Planto? Would you? I. Would oh, hold on, I... Hold on, wait. Considering certain updates that have placed. Go inside. Would it be expected that many more decorative structures would have been modified to expand? Yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah, we would probably have balanced it out somewhat. Oh, there is also there's a mouth for common speed racer and the one that and no mouth for one that wasn't released. Say that again. Oh, I, I'm trying to say what. Um, oh, I why is think it so it's hard, hard to, to tell the difference? Speed Racer Shiny Edition, non shiny. That's the rare and the normal, because the rare and the normal look exactly alike, except for they have a uh, shininess to them. On the characters? Yes, on the figures yeah. themselves. I was thinking the hub for some reason. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yes. The characters, they are shiny. And then we also made a special. There's a the very rare speed racer was the the Grand Prix oh, Grand Prix speed. The one I believe that was the one involving pinball. That yeah, that was the pinball one. The one yeah. with the blue and white jacket with the helmet no and no mouth. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop and Terrapinia? No. Um. No. Three. Everybody knows that. One, <laughs> two, three. Crunch. I, I can't do it. A big part I've learned in creating video games is the iterative process. Yes. How did that work for a toy to life game? Were the figurines... Figurines? Let me just say, stop you right there. They are not figurines. <laughs> These aren't China dolls here. Uh, They're not figurines. They are collectible figures for an audience. Or urban vinyl would be an acceptable as well. Yeah, that's what so. I think I like about Yui Funky. It's more like um, uh, your urban vinyl figure that I love so much. Mm. Like Kid Robot. So we're the... F Figures, I'll give you that, just left on the table, and the tester would choose what they liked. No, no, that isn't, we, no, it wasn't that casual. I think it was, uh, it was much more thought out than that. And we tried to match up the games with the way we would see this, but then we got a little creative. Like, for instance, Bone has a fishing game, you know, he's fishing for bones. So we tried to kind of put the game, because we usually had a list of games that we had sourced and we'd gotten, uh, and then we'd try to match them up with characters that we were planning on. Um, sometimes the games fit perfectly and were appropriately weird together, 
and sometimes they were less they were a little clunkier fit i would say so um but things like deuce were uh, were obviously really good and easy easy fit for us to do um i do have a question actually regarding like ub um ub themselves um is ub considered a guy he's the hub yeah okay he's the hub that's that's not actually my main question my when main there's question... no figure in the hub that's ub Okay, yeah, that's not exactly my question, though. My main question is, do you think of him more as, like, a robot or just, like, a blank slate who just happens to exist in the world? I think of him as just another Funky. He just doesn't have any designs on him. He's He, he literally can do nothing. He is just baby. Well, technically, he can get through the gates um, in... Hidden Realm, because if you actually use just Yubi, he works as one of the buttons. Well, yeah, that's fair, but he's a blank blade of sorts. He doesn't really have any skills. He's just Yubi. Well, to Mixer's point, he's in every zone. So he's so we... in every zone. So we could oh, say that cool. Yubi is basically like a canvas, per se? Sure. Would sure. it be fair to say that he's a shapeshifter of sorts? Like he becomes the identity of the um funky tribe, and that's the only reason why he's able to go to these other worlds because he's masquerading as one one of those tribes. Well, it is kind of like the game, right? So you are collecting these figures, and when you plug them in, you can gain access. So in a sense, you're plugging it into the hub. And then you're able to get access. So it is like they put on, like Yubi's putting on, you know, a, a new costume, as if you will, to get into these places. Oh, wow, gee, I sure love Yubi the shape-shifting robot. <laughs> <laughs> you said shape-shifting. I didn't. What was the favorite? I don't, I still don't know why Funkies was Because camp. Mattel. Next question. I feel like we've answered that a that's lot. Kinda, that's kind of easy to answer. Mattel just wanted more money. Kind of. They weren't making... I mean, making, yeah, kind of, but... Um, something really something they, they weren't wanted, making enough money? Yeah, it was just they had a bar, and Funkies didn't cross that bar, and that bar was insanely high. Yeah. So uh, but, he what couldn't did you do survive. Apparently. Which power does a Lucky have, since they're considered the toughest Funkies, according to Marshall? They are. How much power does he have? Um, 240 volts. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, considering, you be, considering you be can disguise as a henchman, would it be valid to picture that every henchman that you get robbed by is actually just another Funky taking money from you instead of a regular henchman? They claim it's a power tax, but it's just robbery. Ta but travel tax, I'm sorry, not power tax. Yeah, no, you know, Dr. Tinker built all the robots, so it's not actually Funkies. Okay, but you have, but theoretically, the uh, costume of henchmen exists. Like, what if more than just one exists? It, does. it doesn't. Only one does. Only one exists. That's it. It's Not the a... only one. Dang. Even at that, even at that, who? I mean, who would want to use it? See, why would you want to be a bad guy? Yeah. Uh, why? So specifically says that um, it took them a while to gather pieces from the broken henchmen to make that costume. Good oh. point. Despite the fact that there's like hundreds of like pristine conditions sitting around. Um, actually, Jeff, this was a question that I don't think you answered, but here's one thing that kind of sort of bothered me a little bit. Even after... I feel like you've said this like three times now. Are there several things that have kind of maybe bothered you a little bit? A lot of things bother me, but He's I don't like me that much. <laughs> um, I was... This is more of like a story-based thing rather than a gameplay sort of thing but 
why exact what exactly was pre so in order to get all the crystal gems you would essentially let's talk series one you would essentially need to have all the funkies available at that given time and i i know it seems silly now that i think about it but why did you make the story decision to have master locks just not be able to open the original portals even after you've recovered his identity and such um yeah i don't know no. portals will never never repaired i think the idea is that i mean let's face it in order to collect all of those characters it would would have been a challenge right initially so i think that the idea was initially anyway when we launched was just to keep them going and not have master locks be able to unlock anything so yeah i think it was just keep kids engaged in collecting oh and... so it was more of a thing like if the portals were unlocked to everyone, it would defeat the whole purpose of collecting the figures because now you can just use one to go everywhere. Why would you need them? Yeah. Why would you need to collect any more? Oh, wait, but that just that just made that just reminded me. How do you feel about the no hub uh mod for UB Funkies? Oh, I'm okay with it, honestly. You're fine with it, even though it takes away from a component of the game? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with it. I do like the clicking version, you know, the the clicking aspect of the hub, but um, I think if you're, well, let me say it this way, put it this way. I think right now it's fine. I don't think it's something that we would ever have built into the game itself. Having oh, a non, Of course not. Obviously, we wouldn't have had a non-hub version of the game. That would have kind of done a radical departure. Um. But now, in terms of it being discontinued, it's pretty much the only option. Yeah, I mean, now I think it's a great idea. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's get back to questions here. If Jeremiah. you were to make a comeback or somehow made it in 2010 or later, how would technology work now? Would they be Bluetooth to phones or? Uh, well, I think we described one pretty good at solution, right? So the you know, the RF and, but still having the magnets in the hub would have been a good solution for me. Keep I, I have an idea. What if instead of USB 1, we have USB 3? So that's an upgrade on UV functions. Uh, USB C. Last time I checked, that's only really like a minimal upgrade at best. Yeah. I like the idea that we came up with earlier. That would be my vote. Of course, we gotta keep the magnets. The magnets go clink, clink. What are your thoughts on Jeremiah? Big um, boy. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, is this... I think Jeremiah needs a new name. No, he's perfect. No. Yeah. You can't change his name. I think I'm going to name him Blobby. Fine. <laughs> you know how you have Bobby? We love Blobby. This is Blobby. Fine, I guess it's Blobby now. This oh, is kind of a dumb wait, question. Oh, well, wait a minute. What? What's up? Um... Basically, a bridge question is: What was Light Marshall like? Was he like more of a hero, uh, like you described in an interview? Uh, what was he like? What were your plans for him, etc.? I mean, he was Clint Eastwood, right? I mean, we didn't say it, but he was Clint Eastwood. No, no, yeah. no. I mean, Marshall, not Dark. Yeah, Marshall. Light. Light. That's as in, the as in, white figure, the one from. As in, the um, one with the white hat, the white. Got cards. it. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, what was our plan for him? I don't think we had one. Do you have any head cannons in mind for him at the time of planning, with the whole figurine being shown at the con? No, it was just another version of him that we had talked about. Um, 
yeah, yeah. talk talking about it like did you did you did you toss around things regarding him during that those talks or nothing really just his design being like different from marshall's yep it was just a design there was no, no further talks i guess in terms of functionality or gameplay sorry in terms no i think in terms of like morality and such were you considering him to be like an evil counterpart or more of an anti-hero no not a okay <laughs> sorry sometimes the answer is not what we want it to be that's okay that's what life is I can't ask questions in voice chat without transmitting the trans. Oh, yeah, he, spe he speaks natively in Spanish. Oh. Um, to piggyback off the master locks thing, is the same. I mean, I can translate his questions, but that will take uh, not such a long time, but like thirty. To I believe 10 to thirty seconds. I believe <laughs> that that question was something on the lines of. How far was the U Funk thing before everything just stopped? How far did you go into the U Funk development and such? Um, we went far. Um, we had prototypes done, and we had the basic gameplay down, and it was a challenging. It was challenging to get all the software right. I remember. Um, so that was part of the kind of the letdown when things just didn't go. We did have um, we did have some prototypes so that we were showing buyers. Were there more funky tools than just U Funk, I Funk, or whatever? No, but we had planned other ones. Yeah, if that's what you're asking, we had other ones planned. I'd have to look and see which ones they were, but. I know we had three, maybe four different ones. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'll, hold on. To I'll circle back, back around with you. Piggle, piggy back off the Mesolox thing is the same basic reason you still needed to... Okay, so why was it that even when you were in the game room, you still had to play as that specific Funky to access that game? I don't understand like, the question. Like, okay, so your game room in your crib, and once you get a high score in a game, you're able to play it in your um, game room in your crib. Are you following yep. on me? Yep. Um, they're basically asking, why was why it that you had to play as that respective Funky even when you were in your crib game room? Yeah, that's a technical question, actually, because you actually had to have the <laughs> something we built into the game. You had to have that figure in there in order to unlock the game. It didn't matter if the game was actually dropped into your crib or not. Um, as far as I know, it was a software requirement that we had to, in order to keep that consistent. Otherwise, we would have had to rewrite that whole crib area. You, so, so you had to make it so that it, it was just one thing or nothing. Kind of at the time. It nowadays, you know, you look back at it and think, well, that would have just been an easy software rewrite. At the time, it wasn't, because and it was also a time issue too. So, understandable. Yeah, I am a bit boring. Uh oh, yeah. If you had to listen to one zone's theme for the rest of your existence, what zone would you select? Hmm. Probably Funky Key Island. I mean, oh, yeah. that's a good one. Speaking of Key Island, I actually made a custom Funky Key thing. I don't remember. I don't remember if I still have it with me. I think it's I might. In the music channel. You Convenience. In the music channel. Mixer knows all. I remember because all. the music channel only gets used by him and Nameless. <laughs> <laughs> Red. Factual, not rude. <laughs> in UB Funkies, there was a brain in a jar. It was considered as a pet. Why? Why not? Everybody wants a pet brain. I was referring to.
Oof. What about it? Do you like it? What is that? Just like ambient noise? Is that the... What is that? I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. Well, how did you like the vacation zone thing? I it? do like that. That's good. Thank you. I dig it. I know. I know it's nothing like the Funky Key Island music, but I just, it just made sense. Yeah, it does totally. Yeah, I like it. It fits perfectly. I'm not sure what the other recording is. <laughs> How loud is Holler? Louder. It's the tactile click of a funky on a hub. That's mm. what that second audio file is. Oh, is it? Oh, is that what that is? Let me hear it again. Now. Yeah. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> oh, well done. Well done. It's yes. ear I, I'm sorry. I have to say it's ears gas mixed to Jeff. <laughs> yes. Oh, he admitted it. Do you agree with Deuce's music preferences? Um, most of them. What would be the reaction of King Pineapple to King Sid? They, uh, basically, he's asking, would they get along? Would they try to reclaim? Would they try to claim each other's places at their own turf and get in a war over it or something? Yes, they definitely would not have seen eye to eye. Oh, no. Sorry. They just wouldn't have. Um... Would Rewind I, mimic other funkies like a parrot, or would they talk on their own record? I'm going to say they probably would just mimic other funkies. Well, that's how they learn. They, they, even when they say stuff, it's not even in the right word order. Are all funkies robots? Oh, no. they have blood and guts and stuff. They're... Oh, wait, speaking wait, of funky... Think um, about it. You said that maybe um, UB is a robot, so... The ship shifting robot. So that uh, means that all you funkies could be robots, eh? Well, I well, I was thinking more of it on the line. You be being a shape shifting robot in order to blend in more with society without looking like a complete creep. Mm. I think that Sprocket would be, but outside of that, I'm trying to think. Probably. Yeah, that's fair. But I'm also thinking about this. Like, so what made the decision to? Ha so. What prov so? How come uh, you decided to go with the whole um, tribe thing instead of instead of having each funky be their own person? If that makes sense. No. Explain it again. Um, ask, like ask it again with different words. Like, deuce. Um, um for example. Similar to how Skylanders did it, is that there were no, there were no alternate, there, there, like there were no tribes of the characters within Skylanders. Like there was only one Spyro, one Gilgrunt, one Trigger Happy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How come that doesn't? Oh, how, when did you? Um, if you ever did decide, how come you decided to have tribes instead of having each individual Funky just be an individual citizen instead of part of a tribe? Well. Everybody wants to be part of a tribe, right? Uh, Everybody wants to be part of a group. We're all part of this group, right? I, I mean, yes, but the exact same, the exact well, same, per the exact same appearance. And I mean, of course, there's the three variations and such, but yeah. what prevented you from just having one deuce and one twinks who was the ultimate idol or some shit like that? Well, I'm sorry. Well, I think that if we did that, it would have been a very empty world in, in version. Yeah. One. He would yeah. have had four. It probably four figures walking around in this human <laughs> okay character. never mind never mind i mean you could have probably done things to circumvent that but never mind i mean the idea was we wanted to show this full world and it's hard to do that when we got minimum amount you know the idea isn't to restrict it the idea is to open it up and make more and more and i think one of the ways you do that is to create tribes oh jack um, um uh, jack jack uh Jack Frost. Jack Frost. Um, Jack Frost. Um, Vale wants you to translate uh, Jeff's answer in terms of um, a King Sid and the Pineapple King. Yeah. Yeah. 
What happened to the DC Universe UB Funky Prototypes toys? Probably were swiped by someone, uh, just putting them in their pocket and just going away. I guess as Ethan probably has them someplace stuffed away. Ethan! Ethan! <laughs> they won't answer my messages again! <laughs> he's busy, he's got a family and kids, and he's working for Mattel. Well, so. I mean, so do you! <laughs> I don't have kids, I just have dogs. <laughs> oh. Well, they are technically your kids in some form, except they... Yeah, you know what? I'm not going with that analogy. Would funky plushies exist in Terrapinia, like a burger buying a plushie of itself? Hmm. Sure, why not? <laughs> oh god, it just makes me think about that one meme, like, no, don't turn me into a marketable plushie, Master Lux, and then it just cuts to one of the funky plushies. Yes. Then this is definitely there would be. Master Locks would spite people with that, and I would love it. But wait, hold on. Um, wait. So when you were coming up with the concept of Master Locks, um, this isn't exactly about uh, Doc. This is about Doctor Tinker. It was it decided from the beginning that he was going to be Master Locks in disguise, or was his whole identity kind of just shrouded in mystery un until you figured out a cohesive reason? Yeah, I thought I said that earlier. Yeah, it okay, wasn't so thought of early on at all. It was no, no, no. I mean, like when Master Locks was made, he was just that, just a separate quote unquote character from Doctor Tinker. Mysterious, but but it wasn't so. What kind of pre what prevented you from making him like an eldritch creature of sorts? What? An eldritch an eldritch abomination. Basically something that isn't fun something that isn't human slash funky and basically something uh, basically more of like a godly creature who had abilities that no one, no mortal funky could comprehend. Sure. And not just the funky in a trench coat. Yeah, we could have done that. But it was we just all thought it was a little more appropriate to be just Dr. Tinker underneath there. He disappeared all those years ago. Whatever happened to him? There what he a, is. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's got a scar now. Hooray. Yeah, he's got a scar. Listen, oh. this guy isn't as bad as you or me. He's just a made-up figment meant to keep us down. You know? That's bad. Wait, hold on. So chronologically... The Norman, the Norman tree separating Dr. Tinker into two people happened before the Great Disaster, right? Before the Great Disaster, if I... Yeah, right. Before the Great Disaster. So that would mean that Doc was still in Paradox Green, you know, getting phased from the separation and all. Meanwhile, the evil Dr. Tinker tried to steal the crystal gems for himself. God, that feels so weird to say after Steven Universe. <laughs> oh, have you watched it? I'm guessing you've watched Steven Universe. No. Steven Universe? Don't know it. <laughs> well, long story short, there are these characters known as crystal gems. Uh, basically, the basically holograms with math from like gems and such, and like things like garnets, amethysts, mm -hmm. pearls. It always makes me think shat when sh the crystal gems are shattered in UB Funkies. It makes me worry about them being shattered in Steven Universe because to in Steven Universe, being shattered is equivalent to a gem dying. <laughs> so if there were any like light-based beings within those crystal gems and UB funkies, I am so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, anyone else have questions? What is the I have a question for the group. Yes. Oh. <laughs> is there a consensus? Like we need to do like a survey of a of Everybody's favorite funky. Do we have that mix? Uh, I think, I think we did a poll before, but uh, we can definitely draft up a new one. We need like, like an so again because like it's like how many people in the group now? Yeah, <laughs> the server itself has uh, nine hundred and fifty-eight people. We Holy lost crow, three people drafting today. We lost like three people when I at everyone there earlier. <laughs> but those were probably inactives either way, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, but we are right there. getting it's really, really cool. close. 
We also applied for Discord like, partner. So we might be getting that soon. So that's cool. It'd just be interesting to me to see like what everybody's favorite one is, you know, top five characters for everybody. If everybody were to vote once, what would yeah. they be? What would the top ones be? I can set something rules. up like that. Does this rules. include characters like Marshall and Goya? Uh, I'll mm. include every character that is just every character that I know of. Except for the fu- except for Martin the ones guy. that aren't represented in the game, like the ones in the story of the like great library and stuff. We're not. I'm not gonna go through all those and find all them. Like yeah. the Webley, whatever the, the some- Webley Explorer. I forgot his name. Uh. I'll put all the base funkies and all the special funkies in it, basically. Do it. Do it. Okay. But here, here's an even bigger question about it. What about the Funky Mart guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. In there. No. I'll add him. Don't worry. The dot. Yes. Bandit. Bandit. Okay. Wait, what about Clumsy Man? Clumsy Man. I have a question real quick. So is Bandit still? Huh? Still, you... sorry, was Bandit still in the game, or was like they taken out after? Like, because uh, I remember he as was a kid in 1.0. Game. I know that for a fact. I think he was in the Fun Kiki update also, but then I think he vanished after he that. Kinda, he vanished he because they realized. Gotcha. Gotcha. I was just curious. Yeah, but he was originally in Fun Kiki. Was part of it. He was planned for the Funky Key launch. And we moved him, and he just, he was always just one of those funkies that just never got in. You know, there were a couple of them out there. We had one that was based on a knight, and he just never got in either, you know. I'm trying to think, there was another one too that was, yeah, there were a couple of them that were just always hanging around. And that was the other thing too. After four seasons or four, you know, versions of the game, that one that you saw every time and passed on three times, eh, probably not going to get into the game, and actually. But that's how Dot came out, actually. He was just, or, you know, Dot was just hanging around long enough to when we needed an exclusive for Comic Con. We just looked back at the ones that we had, designs that we had already looked at, and Dot just kind of made sense for some reason. Fuck it, just, just make an NPC the exclusive. Were you guys gonna like make a, um, like like separate colors if you, if Dot wasn't an exclusive? Yeah, I think there's artwork on it someplace. If you look, uh, yellow had... and green, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I knew the green one. Yeah, and yellow was the other one, right? They're in the like the they're in the surroundings for you. Yeah, they're like in the game. You can play them with the mod. Yep. Is it ever considered for variations of zones to exist, different seasons, weather? We did play with weather for a while um, within each of the zones. Um, it just it's kind of too much work at that point? It's hard to do in the format that we were playing in, so it was just difficult. And would have taken more resources than we needed to go after it and do it. Hey, Whatever. um... I gotta um, go to do something, so I just wanted to say, see you, see you, Jeff. You, you're super cool, and um, see you guys. You're super cool. Thanks for coming, dude. You just pulled a f- in. You're breathtaking. Oh my god. Man, he pulled a, uh, he pulled a Keanu. Pulled a Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Who did? I did. You did. What did I do? You gotta show him the clip. You gotta show him the clip. Oh, the you're breathtaking? Yeah, show him that. I got you. I got you. Ah, uh, here we go. I put in Jeff questions for you. The feeling of of being there, of walking the streets of the future, 
is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. You're breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> that is greatness. Uh, nice. I did. I did. Keanu him. Mm. Gosh. All right, guys. Well, I've enjoyed doing this. We should do it again. I'm always up for doing another one of these. So we'll just schedule it out, and I'll come with some new stuff that maybe I can share as well. I'll have time. It was to... nice meeting you. It was and... nice meeting you as well. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Jeff. Thank you for attending. Thanks for showing up. How many people did we actually get in this? Uh, we had up to 23 at one point, I believe. Right now we're at 17. Wow. Still better than nothing. That is better than nothing. Thank you, Jeffy Jeff. Thank you. Jeff has higher IQ. I do have one more question. So if we do have another interview, will you be, do you think you could find like hidden info that you haven't shared yet? Or are you not allowed to do that? I'm just asking. I've shared a lot, um, a lot of stuff. Uh, but yes, I will look. There is one more document that I was going to share today. Um, well, let's see. Let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Were any of you actually in the funky trunk? Like, did you partake? Like, actually bought uh, items from it? I think I got a portal jammer and something else. Oh, what, a few of the familiars. I think I, I was too that. young to, like, understand what it was back then, so... <laughs> I just remembered uh, either mom or dad bought it for me because I didn't have a way to pay <laughs> at that time, obviously. These are just some... <sighs> Honestly, I was just kind of looking through. Dot and Tiki are some of the most rare funkies connected and average some of the highest familiar sales per day. Um, higher percentage of people with both funky and familiars than just the familiars. Jammers have the highest sales, followed by moods. Just some interesting side information for you. Some of the better things that we're selling. People love the yellow lava lamps and the lava lamps. The tiki yeah. familiar. And this is just about like putting down money. And this was actually, as you know, probably towards the end of Funky, so where you could see things starting to turn down as the development started slowing down. And just some of the f decisions we were making and kind of wrestling with. Um, That's pretty sad. It is kind of in a way, you're right. Um, but we still had high hopes. I mean, we were planning on making, you know, hopefully over like a half a million dollars in revenue. But it would not be, it didn't last another year. Um, so anyway, just kind of wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys. So I, I have one we question. had, some, so some of the other things are seasonal items, pets and accessories and variations that we we're working on. Do yeah, you have question. any, do you have any data that like, uh, talks about, uh, login times of users? Cause, uh, I'm assuming you'd have something that would track the active amount of uh, users using Funky's online at that time. Yeah, I'll look. I know we did at one point. That'd be so, interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll look at it and see if I can't find it. All right. Um, broadcast messaging, ability to adjust pricing based on time. So we could tell everybody we're running specials on one. Uh, so anyway, a little peek behind the curtain there. Release schedules. Most popular ones. Familiars. Nice. nice. All right. 
that's uh, all the time I got today, but uh, it's been fun again. Uh, Appreciate we'll it. We'll do this again, and I'll bring some, I'll search through my funky chest and see if I can't haul out some good stuff. Thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. Right. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.